and getting ready to go. Uh, tiles have already been bagged, so we are ready for some Scrabble action. Uh, I've played Yuki before, I believe one time in a tournament, and she played a really si uh, solid game. I think she smacked me down pretty thoroughly. So uh, we'll see. Austin is absolutely a monster over the board, but uh, Yuki, no slouch herself. We'll see... Uh, We'll see what kind of game we get from them. I'm always rooting for good, exciting, close games of Scrabble. Of course, a lot of it's outside the player's control, but uh, we're hoping for a good one here for y'all. Yep. Failing that, we're looking for fun plays. Uh, a, a big draw of Scrabble is always seeing cool words. Cool words can be played by anybody. So but, so if, if we don't have a super competitive game, we're looking for cool plays, cool words. And uh, Yuki to go first. Uh, she's drawn the the Z or Z for our Canadians out there. Um, and as we talked about last game, the Z sometimes feels like another blank in CSW. This is where I find it very frustrating to draw on the first turn because either you have to hold it and hope that you get a spot to bomb it next turn, or or you've got to play it off for less than you could get out of it. So I think the right play here is Furs F U R Z E. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 does, it does hurt because you can't slot the Z, but at least you have the Z next to the double letter score, which is defensive. Furs comes down. Yep, yep. So Furs is going to come down. Uh, I think Yuki might be playing upside down, but uh, that was interesting. So Furs is going to come down. I think a very standard move makes a lot of sense. And play turns over to Austin, who's drawn a really interesting rack. Those double Y is complicating what could be a really high scoring opportunity for him. E-I-N-O-X-Y-Y. -Y. I think he's going to have a very quick no-brainer play here of Oxy making Z-O and the E-X. Uh, nothing else stands out superbly. The next best play, according to Quackle, plays the same three tiles for nine fewer points with Oryx. So Austin, yeah, not going to waste any time. Oxy's going to come on down, and uh, that's going to put him just down three points, 42 to 39, as we've already seen the Z and the X two of the best power tiles in the game come down. So now we've got a harder turn. Um, du duplicates are, are one of the worst things you can get, except for triplicates, three Ts. It's going to be hard to play through this one. B I, I, I guess my first thought would be, is there a play, place to play B-I-T-T? Yeah, no, I mean, B-A-T-T-U would be a way to get rid of a lot there of those go. Ts. There's yeah. a really fun play here of Garb. It holds I-T-T-T. -T -T but it makes boxy. It really kind of tightens up this board. There's only maybe plays from the F or on top of EX, uh, but ITTT is just such a bad That's leave. That's just such an ugly leave. I think Batu is the best thing that, that's been mentioned so far. Yeah, I think otherwise ATT on top, making Azo and Tex is a, is a reasonable play, but Yuki oh, looks like she's going to play the fun. Ouch. And, uh, you know, fun. defense doesn't was... happen as much in Collins as it does in no. NWL, but this this has a potential maybe to get clunky here. There's still a lot of stuff that can happen, a lot of ways to open. EXO is valid, plays down from the F, but uh, this could be fun. Yeah, this could be, be very fun. It could be that Yuki is thinking something like, you know, Austin is, is so well known for scoring never stops, incredible offense, incredible word knowledge. So maybe she's taking that into, into account as she says, why not play some defense here? But the risk is huge. I mean, she, she could be handicapped for many, many turns keeping three Ts. Yeah, those Ts are going to be tough to get through. She's drawn into tilt, which will help her get out of that. Austin with an interesting word on his rack, H-A-U-Y-N-E. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that word because I have no idea wow. how to. But uh, that's going to play with hex for yeah. 27. Or uh, garb takes a back E. And uh, so could play underneath there if he really wants to open things up for 26 points. Uh, Austin has seen that word. He's got it set up on his rack. So I think he's really just thinking, do I want to do this? He could also play Y-E-A, making Garb and Zoa uh, for 30 points. H-I-N-U, not the most ideal leave, but that's a way yeah. to keep things a little bit tighter if he prefers to. Though I expect from store scoring never stops that we see yeah. H-A-U. Come down. Yeah, I think H A U Y Y N E is the, is the clear play here, and, and and likely what he wants to do as well, since that's what he's got lined up. So looking over at Yuki's rack, 
Tilth. Tilth gets rid of one extra consonant. Yeah, she's, Tilth, she's I don't making... think it's going to have a great spot to play. Yeah, that's the thing. After H-A-U-Y-N-E comes down, where can she go? Yeah, I, I don't see much that she's going to be able to do with those uh, triplicate T's next nope. turn either. Um, yeah. F-L-I-T-T -T is an option, or F-I-L-T-H. She will be able to play Jut after H-A-U-Y-N-E through the U, um, holding tilt. But yeah, not not too much here. Austin is taking his time here. I wonder yeah, what, what he might about? be looking for or at. Um, does maybe he's thinking about trying to close this board up with a play like YEA? I don't believe Zoed takes any back hooks in CSW. I know it doesn't in NWL, so no. nothing would really go underneath that with a lot of ease. True. Yeah, I, I can't imagine if he's spelling something out there on his rack. I don't know what it is. Oh, AAH is a cool play too from the A and Garb. Oh, thanks for okay. Noah. Uh, thanks to Noah Slapkoff pointing that out in chat. Yeah, that uh, that's nice another thing. way to annihilate this board. <laughs> this turn's more interesting than it looks. Yeah, you just want to play the the cool looking obscure rack cleaning six, but you've got options to make things really tight and score in the process. Think if the scores were flipped, if Austin were up 30 and it was his turn, it's a lot more fun and reasonable to annihilate the board, but maybe not here. The other yeah. concern with YEA is a uh, garb, G-A-R-B-E is going to take a back D. So an E-D word would come down and crush you and you've closed a board, but now you're losing by a lot. <laughs> defined H-A-U-Y-N-E uh, as a blue mineral found in lapis lazuli. <laughs> Interesting. Some people in the chat seem bitter that Austin has this cool slogan, but how many other Scrabble players have a slogan associated with them? He's the only one I can think of. It's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. He has a brand. I'll sometimes drop, I, I drop this line way more often than I should. I say, that is a terrible play, but that's how I roll. And then I just play it anyway and make a terrible <laughs> play because I don't see anything else. But, uh, you know, yeah. that's a self-deprecating as opposed to, you know, cool. How do you think you pronounce H-A-U-Y-N-E? Is it Hawaiian? how ein Hoin? Hoin? I can't even guess the language of origin on that one. That, that's see, if we knew the language of origin, we we might have an idea of how to say it. But yeah, I don't even know. It looks like it looks like some obsolete language, right? It looks a little bit like old English or old French or something like that. It was named by Brun Niergaard for the French crystallographer Rene Just H A U Y. Oh, and the U has an umlaut on it as well. Wow. So the umlaut in French means that you pronounce those vowels separately, like Haiti being IT. So, Aoui. It's, it's still hard to say. And <laughs> I took French. Uh, okay. All right. Here we go. Now the game's moving along here. All right. So, that does and in, in, in eventually come down. Uh, cool defensive plays, but maybe not correct defensive plays available for Austin. And so, I think the more standard but reasonable play is going to come down. Yeah. Back over to Yuki's turn. I think Jut is, is far and away the best play to do here. I'm still going to hold on to two T's and a bunch of consonants, but, um, yeah. you know, Judd is 26 points, cleans up the rack, and, you know, I, I think you just have to do it. Yeah, I think so, too. You don't have anywhere to play tilt or tilt. or Yeah, you just have to hope you'll drop vowels. It's like, looks like that's what she's thinking, too, putting her JT on the end. And Austin getting more eyes, just like last, last, last game, but he yeah. was able to fight through them last time. Fight through them. If if I fight through them, you mean missing a bingo and then drawing. <laughs> but I suppose he did, uh, he did indeed fight through them. So Yuki, <laughs> good, good choice. Jut, yep, Jut was good. Hopefully she gets vowels. 
Uh, and uh, back to Austin with this kind of garbage on his rack, E-E-I-I-I-S-T. Uh, the column's only word, Yite, Y-I-T-I-E, I think is is clear in a way the play you've got to make here. It scores much better, yeah. undoubles those eyes. Yeah, undoubles the eyes. Yeah, even, even has a reasonable leave. Yeah, yeah, EIS yeah. is about as good as you're going to do. Um, exchanging three has a little bit of merit on its own, just throw back EII and hold EIST. But when you've got the 18 points available. No, you've got to score. Right? Yeah, yeah, I don't think it makes sense to exchange here. You've got to score because... Should I say it? Should I, say it? <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll have some very drunk people in the chat if you say it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right. I, I won't say it. But uh, yeah, you've got a score, Austin. I, I think YIT definitely the thing to do. I believe that means an axe. Okay. And yeah, here it comes. Uh, back over to Yuki. Uh, YIT is actually going to give her like filth. Filth, something filth like now that. looks like the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. F H I L N T T. So Filth is going to score very well for her. Uh, she she just gets the choice to decide: Do I play the five, or do I play through the I, um, hitting both of the triple letters? It's thirty-five points if you play down, playing all five yeah. of your tiles. Twenty-seven if you don't. Um, but Filth through the I is going to set up both the S and the Y back hooks, whereas down making E F yeah. going to do neither of those. Yeah, you gotta play down. Yeah, thirty-five points playing down. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what else to do here. I think that's that's clearly the best play that's as well. Good. And uh, she yeah. sees it. I expect her to play it pretty quickly too. Just again, when you find a good play, look for a better one. Take your time. There, but I know there's nothing else there. No, there's nothing. And now Austin has already set up ossified on his rack. My goodness. Wow. Yeah. All right, so Filth indeed coming down. Good okay. play once again. So at, least, at least I feel like she's now back in the game now that she's truly cleaned up her rack at this point. I mean, I, yeah. I think she was hobbled for a couple of turns, but starting with NT, she could she could very well be back back in it uh, tile or rack wise at this point. Yeah, Ossified, I don't know is the right play here. Actually, Iodizes plays for eighty four, making G A R B E and Z O S. It also plays for eighty three. Uh, Hooking onto Haunis, or I, I forgot already how we decided it was pronounced. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, several options. I was a lot more than Ossified. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Ossified yeah. is cuter, but yeah. But maybe in this situation, Yuki is is a solid player, but definitely one of the lower rated players in the division still. And uh, maybe Austin just doesn't want to open the variance of a triple triple. You know, sure. both both of the higher scoring options put an eye in a triple triple spot, and he doesn't want to get beat that way. So he actually bypasses ten or nine points to That's play a off big just seventy four. It's an interesting decision for sure. It only puts yeah. him up by twenty eight, but uh, you know, huh. one that I think a number of players would pick differently. But I I see the rationale for for either option there. Just seems like a big sacrifice to me, and not at, quite at odds with his nickname as well. But. I agree, but you know, sometimes you get triple tripled on a couple times in a tournament, and you get this, you know, triple triple PTSD, and you don't yep. want to let it happen, um, right. especially not early on in the tournament. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, he likes to play it here for reasons that, you know, we can guess but won't fully know. I yeah. can't imagine he missed iodizes, no. but uh, you know, it likes to play this. Yuki now, I think uh, with W I D T H is a tough word to spot, just given the weird ending. But that's a nice option. Or she can play throw or wart or roth or worth, um, all anagrams or roth, all anagrams of one another. <laughs> but they'll all play for thirty-three points if she doesn't see or decide to play with. Yeah, one of those one of those five letter words that that looks like the the, the best spot for sure. Like, like a lot of what else is available right now. It looks like she's got worth set up. Um, yeah. When I play people who are significantly better than me, I try to keep bingo lines open as much as possible because I need to get lucky and bingo to beat them. I don't think I'm going to out tactic them on a tight board. So. Yeah. Uh, Worth, I think, is a good option for her as well. 
keep things open, see if you can yeah. like into a bingo against Austin. Um, she yeah. also holds an eye for worthily or worthier. So that'd be a fun extension and a high scoring one as well. Yeah. And then the, the D could easily make an ED word through the E in Hawaiian. So that there's a good spot for eights. Worthing is valid as well. Okay. So yeah. lots of lots of potential pulls for her to uh, extend that word and get additional points. How about any front, uh, are there awesome. any front front extensions like Mrs. Butterworth style? Ooh. <laughs> quarter quarter worth or something work. like that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Austin would love an A to play vodka right now, but alas, it's not there. Um, so this rack instead likely makes him want to uh, vom. I'm not sure what exactly to do out of this. Uh, so yeah, clunky. Monk. Very clunky. Monk is a lot of points. DVD, not, not the most ideal leave, but he, you're not going to have an ideal leave out of a rack that terrible. So this makes a lot of sense. Hey, someone looked up all the uh, front extensions to Worth with a bot, and there's quite a few. Excellent. Which, but which ones fit? Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to seven letters have front. any Worth. None of, none of these have seven letters in front of Worth, so unfortunately. Yeah, that's, that's no fun. No, no three fun. penny Worth, two pence Worth, three pence Worth. <laughs> Those are fun ones. Tuppence Worth. So uh, Yuki with a... Uh, Worthied. She has pulled into worthied, which, you know, is, is tough. It looks like it might be a word, but unless you study yeah, it, you know it. Yeah, that's that's hard to take a chance on worthied. So worthied would be 45 points. L-N-N-O, not a good leave at all. So perhaps it's better actually to uh, forego that. She's got a really okay. nice uh, scoring play as well of Enol, E-N-O-L, from the E in ossified, making Garbo and Z-O-L. That's 28 points, holds D-E-I-N. That's about as good as it gets. So uh, that's a very tough play to spot. You have to know the Garbo hook. You have to look in a spot that looks kind of strange. But uh, that's a really solid option for her, significantly better than anything that isn't worthied as well. Yeah, Garbo, you just kind of have to know it. I just looked it up, Australian slang for a garbage collector. I was not aware of Garbo outside of Greta Garbo's name. Right, right. So... Uh, yeah, it's tough. Hooks are yeah. really tough, and there's so many of them. Yeah. Um, you have to be certain, too, against Austin, because you know if it's not good, it's coming off the board. Uh, aside from the, the Enol play, not too much else that looks good. You can keep things tight and small with a play like Zoon, Z-O-O-N. Um, you can score a little bit better. You can just play EL uh, in that same spot as Enol if you know the E back hook to garb. But uh, Yuki, too, I'm, I'm sure she's going to take some time, make sure there's not a bingo on this rack. These, these racks are so frustrating when you have all these one-point tiles that look like they should bingo, and yet you can't bingo. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see her spelling out in the ones and all the, all the almost bingos that she has. Mm-hmm. It's uh... Yeah, these are probably my least favorite racks in Scrabble where you're close to a bingo, it's all low scoring tiles, and no matter what you play, unless you happen to know cool hooks like Garbo, like it's it's gonna be hard to score well with out of a rack like this. Right, right. I call it stuck in the sticks. You're close but not quite there. You got all these one pointers, like sticks. S's are gonna be big in this game. Already two have been played in Austin's bingo, but uh, to Back hook, H-A-U-Y-N-E, -E, is going to be quite important unless that spot gets taken away. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen anytime soon. So picking up an S for either one of these players is going to be quite the big deal. Somehow Austin incredibly picked up M-O after playing off M-O. His rack looks almost exactly the same, just traded out a K for an L. And honestly, I'm not sure which of those is, is worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what is he going to do next? At least the other one had potential to score points. This is just yucky. So maybe it's time to vom again. Yep. I think I would also spend a lot of turn or a lot of time if I were Yuki in this situation. Uh, we did just lose our clock widget, it looks like, but hopefully we get that back up quickly. Um, definitely. Oh, there, there we go. Yeah, Perfect. Right on cue. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, no, these are these are really tricky situations with no clear answers in most cases. Lined. Okay. Lined. All right. So she's gonna try to play long and just uh, go yeah. for go for tile turn over here. Is what it's looking an like. An o, oh, maybe not. The Yeah, that makes sense. Go for an S, go for a blank. Points is nothing to sneeze at out of a rack of one pointers, too. And we'll see here. Her next draw is going to be very pivotal. Does she draw one of those big S's for the how line hook? Or uh, Ooh, does she draw some garbage? She's got an S and a blank. A that turnover, big, that turnover there, there great for Yuki. Yes. So and, she's uh, likely bingoing next turn. Yeah, I see Weezins like among other options. Austin. Yeah, players, uh, uh, I feel like on stream so far. <laughs> go go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Austin lucked out with this E that, that she gave him. He can play moved, M-O-V-E-D, through the E in lined. He, wasn't, he didn't have options like that before. Yeah, yeah, that E is going to be very helpful for him to work through this rack. He can also play VOM and MM alongside Monk. That's 28 DDL blank. Yeah. Maybe not the best leave, but... 28 is a lot. Moved is also a great play for him. Or if he wants to, he can play Doved, D-O-V-E-D. Uh, so several options. Just kind of decide which leave you want, what goes best with that unseen pool, what blocks the spot you're more interested in blocking. And uh, Ben, ben Schoenberg points out that Moved takes uh, front hooks that you don't want to give up on the triple lane. I, I, I had forgotten that. So yeah, so then that makes Dove clearly superior. Oh, wow. I did not know Move took either of those front hooks. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Doved yeah. Is, is what he's going to do is, for reasons that make a lot yeah. of sense. The M also nice because you can hit that monk spot if you don't yes. draw anything else reasonable this yeah. turn. And uh, plug passes back over to Yuki, who's got a very strong rack, A-E-N-O-S-W blank. They both are very strong racks. I think we'll see a bingo exchange coming up here. Ooh, yeah, depending on what Yuki plays, Austin may have potential to triple, triple back, too. Yeah, good point. Um, so several options for Yuki. Um, many of them are kind of a good good name, that blank rack. She has W-E-A blank O-N-S, and the blank can be an S for Weezins, a P for Weapons, or a K for Weakens. Um, she's also got an additional bingo, uh, W-A-V-E-S-O-N. So all of those play in exactly the same spot. And pretty much all of them are going to slot that W in a triple-triple. Which is going to be hard for him to triple-triple through, right? Yeah, Looking absolutely. Yeah. So we'll, we'll try to figure out what this blank is going to be. It can be a P, S, or K. Um, might not be consequential in this game, but there's definitely some potential for overlapping plays depending on what it is. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure to what extent we can figure out what that blink is for y'all. Uh, hopefully I can hear from our team and we will let you know when we know or if we know. It's always strange to peek at blanks over a live game because sometimes that's like a tell, right? If they play a, a phony and you're like, what is that blank? You know, like you don't want to give players any tells at all. So it's kind of a gray zone. But in this one, you know, weapons or weakens is such a common word that you know, it, it is, it makes sense, I guess, for someone to be looking at it. Yeah. And that's really her best spot by far, right? I mean, I mean she's it does, probably doesn't really make sense to look to the L and fill for, to the D and, definitely not to the D and W. Like, yeah, it, it looks like even though it opens a triple triple that, that, that the score there in the upper right is just so much better. It doesn't make sense to look elsewhere. If you're able to hit a big bingo through the D, D-O-V-E-D, -E that'd be great. Yeah. I think she also wants to see if there's any kind of bingo that doesn't end in an S. That's, you know, the S would be in the sixth spot so that she mm -hmm. doesn't have to open that right. word square. But we have the luxury of knowing it's not there. And she's going to yeah. go with one of weapons, weasons, or weakens. Uh, I'm not sure. It's a P. So the blank is a P is what we're hearing. Okay. So weapons comes down for Yuki, and she is going to surge ahead in this game.
Uh, Austin, though, definitely going to counter with his own bingo. Either simple and a blank is his rack. So several options. His highest scoring bingo is through that D in Doved would be implodes for 86. But slots an I right next to a triple line. We've still got a Q unseen. Uh, just lots of points can be scored there. Um, he's got several other options that play alongside ossified. Things like palmies and implies with four overlaps, but those are going to open triple triples. We already saw him forego opening triple triples uh, earlier on in this game, sacrificing 10 points to play ossified. Yeah. So we'll see what he chooses to do here. Um, it seems almost certainly he's going to give something back up with this bingo. Uh, he has P S E L L I S M through the L and filth as well. That puts an E in the sixth spot in a triple triple, which is probably the least dangerous thing he can open up. So we'll see how aggressive he wants to be, how many points he wants to score now versus later. Um, tough turn. I really have no idea what I would do if I had perfect word knowledge and saw all of these words. What are you thought? What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's hard. I mean, I, and I, I think some of this is, is the, genius of Alfred Butts and building that into the board that so many times a, a great play gives something great back. I think that's, it's, it's hard to avoid that right now with the, with the options that he has. I'm certainly Pacellism is, is the, is the fun, the fun play. <laughs> yeah. Give us content, Austin. Come on. Play content, something the play, for the stream. Exactly. Yeah, I, I really don't know. I, I think I would just play Palmies and score the points alongside Ossifies. Yeah. That's 83. Yeah. If you triple, triple through a P yeah. in the third spot, like whatever, it wasn't my game to win anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but you have the second blank, so it's not like there's a ton of great stuff in the bag to get burned by. Okay. There, he's spelling out your option there. Yeah, yeah, so I think he sees the overlapping spot, and Palmy's likely the best play for him here. It's always easier to do commentary when you know what your opponent has. Again, Austin has no idea. While there aren't blanks unseen, she could easily have something like Petonk, like we saw in the first game, which would be devastating. She could triple, triple through the W. Like, we, you never know. But we know that she's got CCVG all on her rack. So um, she's not going to have a great response to almost any of these. This is a tough rack. I think Austin's doing a good job taking a lot of time. You want to make sure you play the bingo that is best for you. And I mean, there is a lot of luck going into this, but again, like we've said so many times already today, there is. harness the luck, harness the variance, make it work in your favor. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you make a choice that in a vacuum was right. And in this one iteration was wrong, but you always have to think in right. a vacuum or in the situation you're in at least. Yeah, and just because it backfired on you doesn't mean that it's it was the wrong thing to do. I mean, a lot of people fall into that fallacy, right? Like, I did that, I got triple tripled on, so I'm not going to ever do that again. That's that's not the way to go either. Right, right. The football equivalent of if you don't convert on fourth down, oh, well, I should have punted. Like, no, no, you were still supposed to go for it on fourth down. You yeah. just didn't convert, but mathematically it was the right call. So someone just asked in the chat, what is the schedule like today in future days? It's seven games a day, right? 28 games. And then, the uh, as Matt was saying earlier, the first and second plays are going to go into a best of five final while the others finish their last three games. Yes, yes. Yeah. So today we are doing uh, four games. We'll have a lunch break for about an hour and a half to two hours and then three additional games. The rest of the games through lunchtime today are going to be CSW games. And then in the afternoon, we will bring in WL games I believe that's our plan tomorrow as well. Tomorrow morning, we'll get 
I think mostly, if not all, CSW, and then in the afternoon, all NWL. And I think days three, four, and five will be all NWL, if nothing else, because starting next week, we will have the world championship at this exact same venue, which will be entirely CSW play. The first time that the uh, world championship has been on North American soil since 2001. So it's a pretty big deal over two decades. Yeah. And uh, what a better time to come to the States and what a better city to come to than Las Vegas in July. It's uh, 115, 120 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit, which equates to about 46 to 49, maybe even touching 50 Celsius. And yet I'd be there in a heartbeat if I had the money. <laughs> I love Las Vegas. I don't care how hot it is. Nothing but fun and entertainment and great food and now great company too, as we've got the, the Scrabble tournaments going on the double right. down and all of which is all of which is indoors so yep. you know, it is one of the entertainment capitals of america for sure not just with the uh, casino scene but yeah as matt says top-notch food top-notch entertainment i've only been to vegas once uh for the uh, pacific open tournament a few years ago but i, I did get a sampling of the amazing food scene is really great and and the heat because it is so dry it it you, that feeling where you open your oven to check on your food and you just get hit with the wave of hot, dry air, that is exactly how it feels when those doors open and you walk onto the street. But, you know, it's not like I would rather 120 Fahrenheit in Vegas than 90 and 100 percent humidity in Orlando because <laughs> you don't sweat. <laughs> Just remember to you stay extremely sweat. hydrated at all times. Yes. Every player needs to have a glass of water per game. Yep. And, uh, but otherwise, no, great place to be. Just sorry to those flying to the States for the first time and uh, getting hit with 48 to 50. <laughs> right. Not, not a good uh, first impression of the U.S. Definitely not. And yet, I bet they're going to have a great time. Yeah, for sure. Finally, the game moves forward again. All right. So Austin spends a substantial amount of time. Of I do time. wonder if this is going to come back to hurt him, but yeah. I know he can play quite quickly uh, before doing what we all at home feel like was probably the best play in Palmies. But you want to be very sure. You want to do everything right. And uh, now we'll get to see how Yuki is able to respond with her rack of CCEGNOV. Not... Not a fun turn. Not fun at all. She didn't get the A in the right position for concave. No, no. She'll have Ganev, G-A-N-E-V, through that blank A. Very tough to spot, and you're almost certainly looking to undouble the Cs, so it's kind of a sneaky play to notice. But that's a pretty solid play. 32 points will put her back in the lead. CCO, not great. But it also kind of shuts down this board in a way that many other plays don't. Uh, I, would, big, I would also say COC is not that bad. I mean, in contrast to what I said earlier about duplicates needing to be avoided, there are so many words with COC, or like co-create. And... Yeah, yeah, some reasonable synergy. And if nothing else, like you've got Goka available to the A and weapons. So yeah. not not the worst. Uh, other other options out there as well, C-O-V-E and E-M alongside Monk. It's going to obscure the board a little bit. Hold C-N-G. If you're able to draw an I, that's great. One huge concern for both of these players should be the number of vowels and specifically the number of A's left in the bag. There are six unseen A's with just 21 tiles in the bag, 28 unseen oh, wow. to Yuki. She has none of them. So uh, we'll try to get the unseen pool up on the screen, but there are a lot of vowels. There's also crucially a Q unseen with two U's as well. So very interesting stuff. Uh, she's gonna elect to play Copen here. A good way to score a lot of points. It is 30, but CGV is a really tough leave. And so we'll see, she's gonna need a great pool to be able to work through that. And it's almost certainly gonna take two turns to work through as well. Wow. Although if she gets some of these unseen A's that you're talking about, she can get some vowels. Yeah, Austin definitely drawn his share of wow. these vowels, and he's going to have a fun choice too. Uh, Pawa jumps out, P-A-W-A, -A, as a really obvious play here, oh, yeah. and yet Worthier is also on his rack. 
yeah. both of those plays holds the other one. So I'm inclined to play Wawa hold, or Pawa holding yes. EIR. Yes, word and then is likely to your next it. turn. Agree. Uh, Yuki somehow missed almost all of the vowels. We know Austin's sitting on several, but uh, dang, that's tough for her as now she has <laughs> yeah, C E G R R R V. Oh, very painful for both. Him with all the vowels and her with all the consonants. But... Oh. That's not good. That's not no, good for her. Not fun when you're behind with this. So uh, Yuki now down by 26 points with a bunch of garbage. How do you get back in this game? GRR. Can you spell GRRR with three R's? Is that a good one? I don't, I don't know about CSW, but I know in TWL there's only GRR. Yeah, it's only GRR. Yes, I just checked. Star. So, but she can still play GRR alongside YIT, uh, GI, and REF. Um, I, you, I think you have to do that. CERV pulling into a bunch of vowels is about as good as you're going to be able to do. Uh, unseen is 11, 12 vowels and nine consonants to her. So you've got to get some. And if you don't, Austin has entirely vowels. And uh, yeah, I, I'd definitely be worried about the Q here for both players. But what else can you do? GRR has to be the play, I think. Yeah. Grav, G-R-A-V, through the A and weapons is another option. You'll hold double R's with another R in the bag, but C-E-R-R could bingo uh, a decent amount of the time. Not a lot of lines on this board, and oh, Grav would knock another one out. But, you know, if you're seeing something specific that you like, um, maybe maybe that's an option, too. Good choice. Good okay, option. Yeah, we like the DRR. Yeah, yeah, so yeah we like this DRV is relative synergy. Hopefully yeah, pick up an A and an E. I yeah, we're in good shape. Yeah. And Austin has found more vowels. So Worthier still on his rack. He's got it set up. It's tough yeah. to hold four vowels, but you've got to hit that spot before Yuki does, right? You've got yeah. to score those points. Yeah. And that's exactly what he does. So Worthier comes down right away. And both players now under eight minutes, which is not terrible, but uh, could be a thing as Yuki draws into B curve, which I don't think is a word, but uh, let's see. What is she going to be able to do? So I think if you're Yuki now, you have to make a decision. Am I trying to bingo to win this game or am I going to try to score points and hope Austin has bad tiles? Um, Yuki is down 319 to 366 after Worthier and doesn't have a lot of high scoring options. Um, she has a play like BVU, B E V U E, uh, making PE that scores 22 and holds CR, but that blocks one of your best bingo lines for seven and mucks up that A. So it's going to make it tough for you to bingo after a play like that. Um, you've got to play like Berceau, B-E-R-C-E-A-U, through the A in weapons as well. Scores 28, holds a V. So that's a decent way. If you hope Austin just can't score any points at all, maybe you hit a big Q play. Um, that's yeah. something to think about. I'm thinking about the Q. Like maybe, maybe her thought process could be to start, like wh where can I score with the Q and then leave those spots open. I don't accidentally block them. Yeah, you almost want to hold the D here and hope you draw the Q and, and hit a big spot. Or you want to try to play off your U, hope you miss the Q and draw a bingo. Yeah. Unseen pool, A-A-A-A-E-G-I-L-N-N-O-Q-T-T-U. -A 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 -E so there's a lot of bingo stuff in there. Yeah, there is. And Austin's last two plays, you know, especially Worthier, like Worthier makes sense to play even if he has the Q in most cases. So True. I don't know. It doesn't tell you a lot in front of life, yeah. We're uh we're looking. I guess is there a six or a five that plays through the D in D O V E D that would hit the Q for like seventy points? I don't think I know enough Collins for that. Quads, quids, quads. No S available, so. Yeah. So she's actually going to knock the spot oh, yeah, out. So she she with crude. Um, scoring a lot of points right now, but BEV, I think, is going to be really troublesome for her in the yeah, rest of the game. It'll make things tight, but I, I don't think we're going to win the game too often after that. No, no probably not. Actually, you have Quackle, but that probably tells you the win percentages. 
Yes and no. I think Quackle mostly tells you how much you're or how often you're going to be ahead after two yeah. turns. Um, it's a it's a rough estimate, but it's okay. So eleven unseen. That means four in the bag for Austin. He's counting those right now. He probably wants to play three tiles here. Um, if you empty the bag and you get bingoed out on, it's game over. But could you even be bingoed out on? Like, what is what is available in that pool that fits on this board? He's got to ask himself those questions, figure out what he needs to block, if he needs to block anything at all. I'm not Ooh, seeing a, a six footer. Yeah. <laughs> what what could he possibly need to block here, unfortunately? I don't see any kind of six letter Q play down to the E and worthier, but I believe that's uh probably the biggest threat to him right now. Obviously bingos are a big deal too, but I don't see anything in this pool that plays yeah. down from the C offhand. Yes. I'm not nothing jumps out through the A in weapons. Right. And then under the under the P in Pawa would be the, the other bingo spot. Right. Tanage, Vantage, Ventana, you know, but it, she would have to not have like Q, V, G for some of those. Though in, in the situation Austin is in, you're, you're really looking at worst case scenarios. You're probably 80 plus percent to win yeah. this game despite yeah, the Yeah, it looks like it's pretty well won for him. So just make sure the worst case scenario doesn't happen. And what is that worst case scenario? What is what is most likely to happen? What do I need to block the most? He's going to play Oda here, um, A-E-I-L-T. Maybe he's looking to bingo, rack up some spread. Uh, I thought maybe a play like Toea from the T would have come down. But either he sees something he wants to block or he wants to leave things as open as possible um, to try to bingo actually on himself. And he will draw Antelier, the column's only seven. Wow. So <laughs> nice. Uh, maybe he saw what was in the bag and figured this was strong enough. Uh, strange, I think, um, but it, it worked wow. out absolutely. Yeah, it worked out. It, it seemed like a strange play, but it worked out. Wow. Amazing. Uh, Yuki, yeah, her, her chances to win are slim to none. We happen yeah. to know that uh, in the bag is the Q at this point. So maybe that's why Austin played two as well. He he didn't want to draw the Q. He knew every tile he played was an additional opportunity to yeah. draw the Q. And uh, yeah. Yeah, perhaps it was that. So the, the Q can still go next to the second eye in ossified or next to the eye in palmies. So I'm sure I'm sure when Yuki made that play, she was she was thinking like, okay, if I get the Q, I need to make sure there's more than one spot to to get rid of it, so I don't get stuck with it. Yep, but uh, she's about to draw the Q, emptying the bag, and Austin yeah. probably going to bingo out with alienate. Yeah, to the yeah, e. yep, bingo's out. So. <laughs> Uh, Antelier is one less, um, but that's fine too. And he's going to catch a ton of points off of Yuki's rack as she's yeah. drawn that cue. So again, a back yeah, and forwards sure. game that looked like it was yeah. going to be close. And then yeah. bang. And yeah. Yuki, Yuki's even drawn banquet. <laughs> and won't be able to do anything with uh, it. Uh, yeah. Shaking her head. Like, yeah. You got what you wanted, but <laughs> just one turn too late. Yeah, well, you know, she she made a she made a strong showing, even though she's a lower seated player. Kept it relatively close and interesting the whole way through. Yeah, a lot. Seeds up two and one now. Yep, yep. So Austin going to win this game. Uh, looked felt a lot closer than it looks on paper. We got a final at four eighty to three sixty one after. Yeah, it, it did feel closer. Yeah, and uh, and all the points, but definitely a good showing by Yuki and a uh, good job by Austin to uh, pull it out the Pawa to worthier to bingo at the end of the game. You know, the scoring didn't stop. No. Nope. Does that count too? Are we taking a drink <laughs> now? The scoring didn't stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So they're taking a picture of the board. I think Austin likes to post a lot of his. They'll get their results slips filled out. We will have one more game for y'all before the lunch break. I'm sitting here shaking my head like lunch break over on the East Coast because it's 3.30 for yeah. me to do another game before I get yeah. to eat lunch. But, you know, they're on Vegas time, Pacific time. So uh, one more game, lunch break, and we will be back after the lunch break at 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern with three games of NWL to close out. This is the Scrabble Players Championship from Las Vegas, Nevada one of two major Scrabble tournaments going to be hosted in Las Vegas back-to-back -back with the World Championship coming next week. Uh, kudos to the diehards playing both of those back-to-back. -back. That is a ton of Scrabble and a ton of mental wow. energy to exert. Uh, we are going to cut to a quick break before we give y'all Game 4. Game 4 will again be me, Matt Canning, joined by Mina Lay, and uh, we'll have that action for you shortly. Don't go anywhere. Stay in chat. Keep things entertaining for everybody, and we'll see y'all back in just a moment. Okay. 